did you talk baby face heel storylines or anything or was it Hey, when you're ready to go, we'll just bring you in and let's see what happens. Yeah, no, no, he said you'll come in. Well, we talked about that, and and of course we talked about the first. My first, the thing will be with you. You know what I mean? And it was because it was what we felt like. We did it in Memphis too. Uh, we felt like it was uh, it was some closure to a to that Millie Vanilli, Millie Vanilli story that started in '95. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. we always felt like whatever promotion we were in, we had to go ahead and close that book. Uh, before we could move on. And so I think we felt like, let's do this one more time. When my dad was the commissioner or something. I forget what my dad was exactly, but he, uh, him and Jeff got into it. And then I hit the ring in a bullet mask. And my other brother, Steve came out with a bullet mask on. And there was a whole bullet deal there. I don't remember, uh, step for step, but then I got to the match with Jeff where he drug me through the thing and I almost died. <laughs> Are you uh, not being able to breathe is the worst. You know what I mean? Like literally still being moving, but not being able to catch your breath and move and just kind of being steered into things. <laughs> well, if you're working with Bullet, are y'all the original Bullet Club? I mean, of course I, we were. I feel of course, like we got to take credit for that, right? Of course we were. And we need to put like a bullet mask and then put Bullet Club. OG Bullet Club. Maybe, Buddy, o, I- maybe two O's, like double OG. <laughs> Our merch department is going to be hopping after this episode. Baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you surprised that Jeff brought Russo in? No, no. I knew of Jeff and, and Vince's relationship, for, not only from uh, uh, WWF at the time, but also WCW. So I wasn't surprised at all. Um, I, a lot of people feel one way or another about Russo. Russo was always good to me. Uh, Vince Russo and I get along really well. Like it's, you know, we had one brush up, but it was no big deal. And, and that was, we were over that. And that, that was 25 years ago, you know? And so I, I've always liked Vince and no, I wasn't surprised at all when Jeff uh, brought him in. Look, Vince is going to try some wacky things. He's going to throw a lot of things at the wall and some are going to stick and some aren't. Um, that's just his way. And, and everybody who used to be a booker is always a critic of another booker. You know what I mean? Sure. It's always, and now even the fans are critics of the booker. So, um, you know, what do I know? <laughs> one, uh, uh, all right, let's get into the fan questions. Our first one is from Tony flowers. Oh, you didn't oh, know if, TF. if TNA didn't work out, was there a plan B for you at this time? Um, I think of the plan B was just overdose. Just, uh, oh God, just go- <laughs> it got dark. Plan when B can, was bad. Is it raining? Plan <laughs> B was bad. Plan Plan I mean, B it, was that ledge. That ledge I was just standing on, and Pledge B or Plan B was that first step. And it, uh, yeah, no, there was not a Plan B, man. I would have gone back to doing the indies, uh, yeah. and it just survived any way I could have until until I finally hit rock bottom, whenever that would have been. Um, and look, maybe it would have been sooner. To be quite honest with you, if I had, uh, excuse me. I hit hard consequences, but if I had had the inability to to uh, maintain gainful employment, like once I once I lost all of that, then it was really I need to find out what what I'm doing, and that was when I started kind of a decade long search for serenity mm-hmm. and peace and and that. But that's when I that's when I finally decided I needed to get sober t- 10 years after this, you know what I mean? But yeah, plan B was plan B was keep, keep trying to stay high uh, because that's all it was about at that time, you know, sadly enough. Brad's 